Almost Christmas break here in Spokane and only a couple more chances for the number 22 Gonzaga women's basketball team to tighten things up before conference play starts next weekend. It is almost here. Tonight, they'll have a chance to work out some more kinks as they host Queens University from Charlotte. Well, it's great to see you again with the great Amanda Smith courtside here at the Kennel. I'm Greg Talbot, and let's get right into it, Amanda. This has been a roller coaster for the Gonzaga women's team the last couple of weeks. Between injuries and illnesses, they've only been dressing seven players, especially on Sunday when they play at Stanford. Let's take a look at who's out and how it happened. The big one, Kaylee Trong, starting point guard. She's been out a couple of games. Maude Hybens had a concussion. Meanwhile, Eliza Hollingsworth and Callie Stokes were out sick. That really threw a wrench into all their plans. Yeah, so I think a couple things happen. When you have illness, when you have injury, one, you get to see extended minutes from some players that you typically wouldn't. But then on the contrary, you're not able to go to your bench as much, and we're not seeing the depth that we have been used to so far this season with this Gonzaga team. So now to the good news. Even with all those injuries, Gonzaga still went 3-1 and one during that span, and now they're back in the top 25. And I think when something like this happens, you have to look at kind of that leadership role. We know that it comes from Kaylin Trong. The last five games, 18 points is what she is averaging along with, well, you know, just five assists. <laughs> uh, just something that we expect from her and we know that she can do being a cedar, senior, being a leader on this team. And then when we talk about leadership, when we talk about experience and depth, Brenna Maxwell stepping up, stepping into that starter role her last five games, averaging 14 points and three rebounds. We know that the Zags can do it. So the Zags are kind of a question mark right now. Tonight should be interesting who's healthy, who's on the floor, and what about Queens? I guess we'll find out next on the WCC Network on Stadium. We got a party here. Queens University, Gonzaga University women's basketball tonight on the WCC Network in just minutes. Greg Talbot and Amanda Smith with you here as we get ready to tip it off. Amanda, let's take a look at this Gonzaga starting lineup. Once again, we see only seven players dressed. That means Destiny Burton slots into the starting lineup at the four with Kaylin playing the one. Yeah, and I think that it's just going to be really important for Gonzaga in this game to do what they do best, right? Get out, push the ball, run, and then on the defensive end, make sure that you're communicating, having those rotations with seven players available. It's difficult, obviously, when you look at the flow of the game. As for the Queens Royals, Adia Brisker is their leading scorer. Jordan Weaver, pretty good down there on the boards. Yeah, and I would say with this Queens University team, you know, this is their first program matchup against a ranked opponent. 
So I think that this is a great opportunity for them. I think we're going to see a lot of different players getting minutes from this team. So Zags, Royals, let's go ahead and take a look at your keys to the game. Amanda, what do you think? Yeah, so for Gonzaga, I would say come out with a fast start, right? I mentioned that for Queens University, this is their first program matchup versus a ranked opponent. So if you're Gonzaga, do what you do best. Get out, run in transition. That being said, you don't want to get yourself into a position where you're in some sort of foul trouble knowing that you have just seven available players. Obviously, your bench isn't that deep in this moment. And I think, you know, circling back to the second key there, attacking the paint, that just goes to what Gonzaga is good at. We know that they're really strong inside. I would just attack those post players from Queens University. See what you can do in the paint. One of the nice things about this current iteration of the Gonzaga team is even with some of the injuries that they have had, they're taller than Queens. If they can feed down low, they should have a field day. Yeah, and Queens, their last game, actually both of these teams' last games were versus Pac-12 opponents. Yeah. Queens University, their last game coming against Washington, they only played about six players with real, what I consider true, extended minutes. So if you're Gonzaga attacking that paint, you know yourself, you want to stay out of foul trouble, but see what you can do down low and if you can get them to have to go to their bench as well. It's the six foot four Hawa Balde into tip for Queens and Yvonne Ejim for the Zags. It's in the air, it's Destiny Burton corralling it for GU. And we are underway for some Tuesday night hoops here in Spokane. Well, the last few games were pretty successful all in all. Despite the injuries for GU, went on the road to Stephen F. Austin, which is a really good program. Came away with a double-digit win down there. Von Ejim gets fouled. She'll go to the line early on. And then on Sunday, like you said, Amanda, they were at number two Stanford. They lost by about 20, but you really need to take that number with a grain of salt considering how many injuries and illnesses there were. That was a valiant effort. Yeah, obviously, Kaylin Trong coming off a great performance against Stanford, 22 points from her in that game. And I think that, if anything, what kind of this period of time has shown, if you are a Zags fan, is that we have talked about the depth that this team has. Yes, that is coming to light as we're seeing, you know, a player like Destiny Burton getting extended minutes yeah. when maybe she's someone who you wouldn't necessarily think of to be first off the bench or even start. Michaela Williams pulls down the rebound. We have a jump ball early on. And it's going to the Royals. One of the things about this offense, though, is, yes, injuries the last couple of games, right, dating back to that Tennessee game, which is before the postponed Eastern Washington game around Thanksgiving. Coming into this week, the Zags still leading the West Coast Conference in scoring, second in the conference in field goal percentage. They're still a really good shooting team despite the injuries. And I think that that just speaks to the depth Ideally, you want to be able to go to your bench in moments, uh, but at the end of the day, it's like when injuries come up, this is what you want in the position you want to be in. That was Casey Kidwell with the jump shot going down for the Royals. She seems to be always around the ball, and there's a takeaway by Adia Brisker, their leading scorer on the year. She lays it in. And it's 4-1 to one Royals. Great defensive pressure from Brisker. I think that Gonzaga, they're going to have to take care of the ball. You know, this is a team that obviously they're coming into this game. This is the first time that they're matching up with Gonzaga. This is a great opportunity for them to also work on against a competitive Gonzaga team, some of what they will want to work it on once they get into their conference play. Down low to Ejim, she's got it in all three of Gonzaga's early points. Once again, I think, you know, just kind of going to the paint, hitting Yvonne on Ejim when you can, we know what she can do down low, and you're right, they do have a size differential, kind of an advantage, I would say, against Queens. And boy, Yvonne Ejim, as we have an inbound here for the Royals, Yvonne now leading the team in scoring, and rebounding. 16 points a game, eight boards a game. It is shaping up to be the year of Vani here in the kennel. I like that. That was good. You're welcome. <laughs> Here's Alexandria Johnson trying to take it in for the Royals. Back out to Brisker, who just put it in. A little bit of space against Maxwell, and she's pure. Five foot nine senior out of Pennsylvania, the leading scorer on the team. They're not a high scoring team. She's only averaging about 11 points a game, but still number one. But you need her to get 11 points in this game against Gonzaga. She went scoreless a couple of games ago. So to see her, you know, kind of finding an offensive flow should be promising for Queens fans. Speaking of offensive flow, what a dish from Burton to Ejim. And it's back to a one-point game. 
This is great experience for a player like Destiny Burton. You know, I mentioned that she's not necessarily maybe, you know, coming in this year, someone who you would think would be first off the bench or even get an opportunity to start. But when you make a commitment to play at Gonzaga, you have to sign up for these moments. No question, Brisker takes it again. She's getting ready to show off. Eight points already for the Royals. And you kind of saw her signaling to her team, let's go. You can see the emotion that she's playing with. And she's coming out hot to start. Yeah, they're bringing the energy early, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I would say that that's kind of something where I'm seeing an advantage from Queens in this moment. You know, they're really pushing the basketball, kind of running. And, and like you mentioned, they have that energy right now. I think Gonzaga, they kind of need to meet them there. So we have our first substitution for the Zags. Destiny Burton to the bench and checking in for the first time tonight. The sophomore guard from England, Esther Little. And as they find Ejim, and she's able to get it off the rim. Little goes for the rebound. They asked Esther Little to do something so crazy that she just never would have assumed would happen back on Sunday against Stanford, Amanda. I mean, she's a guard. She is 6'2", but she's still a guard mm -hmm. because some of the taller players were out against the Cardinal. She was having to play post forward against Pac-12 forwards for Stanford. That was a big ask as Johnson puts it down. That is no easy task, okay, especially when you look at not just Stanford and what they're known for, but who is on their roster right now. You have, you know, Cameron Brink. You have a Fran Belibi, these incredible talents from the Pac-12. And it, to play in a position that you're not typically used to, that's what we're used to seeing from her, right? So it's just an adjustment, but I think that one that down the road could be really beneficial for her game. First points of the season, for Esther Little, coming into this game tonight, she had played something around 75 minutes, had only taken one shot all year. She was 0 for 1, and now she's a 50% shooter. It's shocking. That's like a shocking stat to me. Right. But in these kinds of moments when you necessarily don't have the players to kind of go to on the bench, you need everyone to be able to put up buckets. It's going to be a whole team effort for the next couple of games for sure. Trong wants a foul, she's not gonna get it. Kidwell had the takeaway, Brisker for another two. Look at this energy she's bringing. She's got eight of the team's first 12 points. Great energy right now from this Queens team. I love the hands from Kidwell. And then Brisker, she is just an offensive player that Gonzaga, they're gonna have to know where she is and at least limit what she's able to do. Cause right now, it's all her. That one's tipped away by Weaver. By the way, Brisker four for four. Take another look, great dish. Tron couldn't get there in time at a good angle. Yeah, great vision, and I just like that Brisker, you know, a 5'9 guard, she didn't shy away from the six foot one of on Ejim, right? She kind of went up with that offhand to draw some separation. So here's Kaylin Trong running the point tonight for the Zags. She's not taking a shot yet, but who needs to shoot with a pass like that to Esther Little? Let's talk about a great assist. I love kind of like the no look, draw over the defense. Once you have their vision and eyes on you, bam, dish to your, well, I don't want to say big down low because we don't usually see her down right. low, but this is a position, you know, that for the time being, she's going to have to be comfortable moving into. And that's going to take us to our first time out of this game. Little Queens University out of Charlotte looking great so far, a 12 to nine lead on top of Gonzaga. So what are we seeing tonight? We're seeing Kaylin Trong at the point dishing it out. We'll talk about her and what they're expecting her to do coming up after the break.
A little Queens University out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Looking really good so far at the under five first quarter timeout, 12 to nine Royals. So this is one of the interesting kind of geographic things about college sports. This is their first year moving up to the A Sun. They came from division two, Amanda. The way we have a lot of D3 schools here in the Northwest, North Carolina just riddled with D2 schools and they made the jump. Yeah, and I mentioned earlier, but you know, this is their first time as a program playing against a ranked opponent. I'm really impressed so far with what they have come out and they've been able to do against Gonzaga specifically looking at a player like Adia Brisker, you know, we know that she is a scorer. She's the team's leading scorer, but to come out and have eight of your team's 12 points in the first quarter, that's huge. First substitution coming out of the break is Peyton Muma for the Zags. Interestingly, Kaitlyn Trong will stay in the game as we have a foul there by Casey Kidwell as she was trying to square up with Esther Little. So this brings up a good opportunity for us to talk about the point guard position for Gonzaga. Kaitlyn Trong, people who know this team know that Kaitlyn is really more of an off-ball shooting guard, but her sister, her twin, Kaylee, did get hurt last year and forced Kaylin, here she is, into the starting point guard role. And she was really good when she had to fill in last year, passed it well, got her points as she misses the layup there. But what's interesting, Amanda, is even as a point, she's still the shooter. She had 22 against Stanford, 21 against Stephen F. Austin, 15 against Maine. She's still gonna be the scorer, even if she's passing it out at the top of the key. Well, and that's what they need her to be. You know, as a senior, as someone who's looked at as a leader on this team, yes, maybe she wouldn't ideally be running the point guard position, but that being said, she can. And I think that that's what's really important when you look at a well-versed, well-rounded player. Someone like Kaylin Trong, they can move into different roles when needed. Certainly helps that she's done it before, too. Here's Alexandria Johnson. Kidwell able to keep it in bounds. Kidwell is always near the ball. 19 steals, 19 assists this year, as it's another pure jumper from Adia Brisker. You gotta be kidding me. Well, and coming into this game, Greg, she was just two of 21 from three-point range. So right now, offensively, you can see it. She feels that she is hot. She's got the hot hand. If I'm Queens, I'm gonna continue to give her the ball until someone stops her on this Gonzaga team. Five for six from the field, and now one from one from downtown as Kaylin Strong responds. It's a little back and forth right now, I would say. It's scoring from each side, not necessarily any sort of stops defensively from either program. No, this has been a heavy offensive game so far, Amanda, no doubt. Kidwell always around the ball. For someone who doesn't score as much as someone like Adia Brisker or Alexandria Johnson, they seem to funnel a lot of the offense through here. Five to shoot, Johnson, pretty jumper, and Destiny Burton the rebound. Interesting to see how the Zags utilize all seven players available to them tonight. Over to Williams in the corner. Shot won't go and a good rebound by Amari Davis. So we see more sparing timeouts already, Amanda. We don't see new players coming in on every dead ball the way we sometimes do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think right now, you know, this is a close competitive game. So especially, you know, if this is working for Queens, they are finding a way into the paint. And I kind of want to just circle to what they're doing because I would try to push them, if I'm Gonzaga's defense, to shoot from the outside. They struggle from three-point range. They're just a 25% three-point shooting team. So right now they're getting these looks from the inside that ideally is what they want on the offensive end. Strong able to keep the dribble as she hit the deck. A great dish to Esther Little. Did you like feel the speed of that pass? Yep. Kind of like almost a semi like middle baseball kind of like pass yep. where she didn't have it fully above her shoulder. But in order to make that kind of pass, you know, through the lane with so many defenders around, you have to have speed on the ball. And she absolutely did. And Amanda, if there was any doubt that Kaylin Trong can be an effective point guard, doubt no further. Oh yeah, no, we know that she can do this. Like you said, she's done it before. I think that, you know, sometimes players are more comfortable when they don't typically run the point guard position, moving to that off ball spot, but she absolutely can when needed. And that's what's important. Got a shot clock violation there with just a hair over a minute to go in the quarter and Brennan Maxwell back in. 
along with Avon with, uh, Egypt. You know what? We didn't even mention the fact that she kind of fell down a little bit right before making that pass. Yeah. So in order to kind of have the speed and strength on it to stand up and then have that vision, so impressive. Here's Egypt trying to work one-on-one -on -one with Davis. That was a great move, and one more. Love that move from Yvonne Ejim. Knowing that you have a size advantage against Queens players in the paint and just knowing what she can do on the offensive end, I think that offensively they're going to look to try to hit her a little bit more as we see the game progress because this is where they've been so successful on the awesome offensive end so far. Here's Ejim at the free throw line. Already seven points out of the team's 15. And make it eight. So when we talk about, you know, players missing from Gonzaga, Yvonne Ejim, Brenna Maxwell, Kaylin Trong, you have these players playing extended minutes against Stanford, each of them playing over 30. Yeah. That's a lot, a lot of minutes that, you know, especially if you're not used to playing, can prove to be difficult, especially when you start to move into games closer and closer. Probably two more shots to go up here before the end of the first quarter. And boy, what a great one it has been for the Royals. So you kind of see that Gonzaga's defense has almost moved to what is a high zone, and to me that says shoot from the outside. Yep. Well, they know the shooting percentage. They gave up a shot to Brisker. They're lucky it did not go in. Avon Ejim stepped out of bounds. This is going to stay with the Royals with 16 seconds left in the quarter, so no shot clock. And one more chance for the Royals, it looks like, unless they turn it over here. The Zags will end the first quarter behind. And this is Jordan Weaver checking back in. They're looking for Brisker. They'll find Kidwell. And time to run one more play. I would just, you know, honestly try to get the ball to Brisker, let her go one on one. Man, Maxwell fell down, opened up a lane, shot didn't go. That'll head back the Zags' way. Time for one last shot and a chance to. Maybe take the lead if it goes down. Here's Kalen Trong, three on the clock. Puts up a three. Not a bad looking shot, it's off the mark. And at the end of one, Queens University out of Charlotte, the smallest name opponent on their schedule this year, is leading them. Are the Zags a little tired? Is it because they're shorthanded? Who knows? We'll find out as we head to the second quarter after this. 17-16 Queens on the WCC Network on Stadium.
17, Gonzaga 16 at the end of the first quarter as we head into number two with Peyton Muma taking control for the Zags here at point guard. What an unbelievable first quarter for their leading scorer, Amanda Adia Brisker. Yeah, 11 per average. 11 of Queen's first quarter, 17 points. This is what you need from your offensive player, your go-to scorer. She has come out fired up. She's got the hot hand. If I'm Queen's, I'm going to continue to look to get her to the ball until she starts to slow down. And importantly, she's five for seven. You know who is also efficient? Yvonne Egan. She's now four for five. Yeah, I know one of my keys to the game was attack the paint. If I'm Gonzaga, I just want to continue to get Avon Ejim the ball, see what she can do, let her work down low. If it's not working, then bam, hit my guards on the perimeter. But right now, she also, when we talk about hot hands, she's got it. Here comes Brisker, still feeding her. She'll take it himself, herself, rejected by Williams. Now, speaking of hot hands, the current lineup on the floor for the Zags, there's Peyton Muma until she made that basket. Ejim was the only gal on the floor for the Zags who had scored. This lineup that just started the second quarter for GU, it was Ejim 10 points. Everybody else, none. And we'll go to a break. All of a sudden, the Zags in control, 20 to 17, on the WCC Network on Stadium. After a nice early run to start the second quarter, the Bulldogs back in control. Gonzaga 20 and Queens University 17. You know who we have not heard from at all yet tonight, Amanda, is Brenda Maxwell. Yeah, which is really interesting because when you look at scoring, she is ranked third right now on this Gonzaga team in scoring, averaging point 14 points per game. Coming into this game, she's made a three-pointer in every game so far this season. So we know that she's efficient on that perimeter, the fact that she hasn't even attempted a shot so far, I would say obviously get her more involved uh, because you want, you know, not just your post player like Avon Egypt to have the hot hand, but hey, let's try to get some work done from the outside too. Yeah, she was such a monster these last couple of games. 19 against Stanford, 13 against Stephen F. Austin as that one goes back to Zags way out of bounds. Also top 20 in the country in three point shooting percentage. So this is why it's important to have veteran transfers on your team because yeah they come in from outside the program but they know what your team requires yeah definitely and it's almost like it feels like it's been this seamless transition for her to come in oh my gosh can she miss she can't nope five for six i guess she could miss one shot yeah i guess technically, technically. i was factually wrong <laughs> where's your journalistic <laughs> integrity amanda come on i just have positive thinking sure <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, with a player like Brenna Maxwell, I think it's just been this seamless transition for her <laughs> to come in. They have the offensive play that she likes, which is like, let's run, let's shoot. We love offense. So I definitely want to see her get more involved in this game. Well, she's already up court awaiting a pass from Peyton Muma, but she was blocked by Kidwell. Instead, it's up to Ejim and out of bounds. 
Man, what a start to this game for Ejim. Five for six from the field, 12 points, and a pair of defensive rebounds as well. So it's kind of interesting when you look at both sides is it's really just been these two scorers yep. from each program. It's been Adia Brisker from Queens and then Avon Ejim from Gonzaga. Someone else, I think, offensively from each side is going to need to start putting points on the board because in these timeouts, I would assume that there is like an emphasis on, hey, stop the score right now. Esther Little back on the floor for the Zags. She's got six points considering she hadn't scored until tonight all year. That's great for her. Look at the way that once again, though, you have Queen's offense able to get into the paint. I want to see Gonzaga's defense limit what they're able to do from the inside, not just, you know, scoring wise, but forcing them to shoot the three point shot. Oh, Michaela Williams. I'm amazed she was able to get up that quickly. Good for her. Ouch. And that'll be a foul for sure on Queens. Ow. She got up mad about that too, didn't she? Yeah, you almost, you know, you kind of heard, if you're in the arena, you heard mm -hmm. the the strength that she kind of came down with uh, when she fell. So you just mentioned, Amanda, about the fact that Queens keeps getting into the paint. That's part of the reason why. Mott Hybens was on concussion protocol even a couple days ago. And there on the left of her is Eliza Hollingsworth. So between them, that's a pair of six foot three forwards. Without the Twin Towers, it, it's easier to get in there, no doubt. Yeah, so I would definitely say you know, you know this coming into this game that you you don't have those players. So defensively, if I'm Gonzaga, I know that I have to make an adjustment. Yes, you have smaller players playing in that position, but I would just pressure the basketball. You don't even want to allow that entry or dribble into the paint, force them to shoot from the outside because that's where they have struggled. Well, considering we're off the floor at the moment, got to imagine they're reviewing whether or not this is flagrant. Uh, Michaela Williams got up mad about that and potentially deservedly so. This coach Craig Fortier, alongside his wife Lisa, the head coach leading the huddle. Our officials really taking their time out there at center court too. Back out on the floor, same five for the Zags. So it looks like they took a look at the play. Call is a stands. We haven't heard otherwise. And they're going to move on. Look at Yvonne Ejim working. You were saying? Come on. Great, great position. And like I mentioned, you know, look at her. She's got the position, bam, give her the ball, let her go to work. She's going off, already 14 points. Six for seven from the floor, two for three from the free throw line. By the way, that's 14 points in 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, efficient, right? You said it. As good as it gets. We saw signs of her being this player last year. To see it happen the way it has, it's the kind of thing that it's the kind of thing that makes it enjoyable to be a fan of a team long term if you're one of these Gonzaga fans here in the kennel tonight because you get to see her go from freshman, not getting a lot of playing time, hardly any actually, to a really amazing sixth man last year to becoming the star of the team all in three years. It's been such a fun journey to watch her progress. And I think in moments like this, when you are you know, down with players, having a consistent player that you know that you can just rely on. I think that's such a luxury to have as a coach, a player that you know that you can always count on. All right, so Kaylin Trong run on the point, despite that being a great pass from Ejim. Trong still just two points on the night and, and one for three shooting. So she's taking her role as a passer tonight more seriously than she did maybe against Stanford the other night. Well, and I think that, you know, when we talk about the scorers, Esther Little, the next 
Zag with the highest points with six points in this game. But really it's like Yvonne Ejim has been so efficient. Queen's defense has had a hard time slowing her down. So continue to get her the basketball. No one else has really had to step up and score yet because they are not able to cut her off offensively. That's Brisker on defense. Been a quieter couple of minutes for her. Ejim fouled by Jalen Brown. And Vani will go back to the free throw line for the third time. I think that for Queens right now, you have to try to find which player can match up with Ejim if you want to cut into this Gonzaga deficit. I think something else worth noting, you know, while we have a little bit of stoppage, is that Adia Brisker has not scored in this quarter. It's been a, been a few minutes. So when we talk about, you know, offensive efficiency, we talked about two players from each side really being those scorers for each program. Avon Ejim continuing to put up those kinds of numbers, and then a defensive adjustment coming on the other end from Gonzaga, not allowing Brisker to get as many touches on the ball. Ejim misses the front end. Speaking of shooting, speaking of numbers, these teams are pretty identical. Field goal percentage wise at the end of one. Midway through the second now, we're starting to see some separation. Zag shooting 65%, Queens down at 42, and that's where that now nine point disparity has come from. Yeah, and with that free throw, 10 points. And I think that, you know, in addition to how we just mentioned Brisker hasn't scored, actually Queens has not scored this quarter. Maxwell, great pass to Ejim. She'll do it again, you bet. Come on. This is going to be a Hall of Fame night. 16, uh, 18 points, 7 for 8 from the field and two rebounds. So, so good. It starts from the other end, and then Ejim running the floor. I like the way that she attacked the middle, and then at the last second, kind of transitioned to that opposite hand on the left side. Elevated J from Brown. Excellent over the head of Maxwell. So Queens, first points of the quarter coming from Brown. Little looking to pass it away, <laughs> instead throws it into the crowd. They're saying that Brisker tipped it. I don't know. Well, so we had the angle on that over here, Amanda, and it didn't look like that to me necessarily, but again, take a look at Ejim covered going up with the left. Don't you just love that? Like she waits to the last second yep. and uses that left hand. And then another three point shot from Brown. You know, I talked about the fact that this isn't necessarily a three point shooting team, but hey, if you're knocking them down some nights, you're just hot as a program. And right now they're feeling it from the perimeter. Second core going a little more slowly than the first at this rate. Early timeouts might have aided in that. Also got to think Queens might want to slow this down, keep the Zags from running. Muma on Brisker, and five to shoot. So you kind of see with this high zone almost, Queens having a more difficult time getting into the paint, but you don't want to have a defensive breakdown at the last second when the shot clock is running out like we just saw right there. Yeah, they gave up the shot to Alexandria Johnson thinking maybe she was going to run out of time, because again, that I think they already have two shot clock violations tonight. So the Peyton Muma show is on. She's back in running the point, it looks like, with Kaylin Trong here on the floor, probably enjoying her time at the two. Destiny Burton ran out of time. Muma, two to shoot, got to get rid of it. Didn't get it up in time. You talked about shot clock violations on the other end. Yeah. Well, hey, great defensive pressure there from Queens. Something, you know, that I think that they're taking advantage of with Yvonne Ejim out of the game, forcing Gonzaga to try to play high. Well, boy, one of the benefits, really, Amanda, of the last couple of games, again, despite the fact that the injuries have been awful, is we're getting to see the next generation of starters get more minutes than we probably otherwise would, specifically Peyton Muma. Uh, the main takeaway is, at least for me, she seems pretty much ready for the bright lights. Yeah, Peyton Muma, I think that this is great experience from her, you know, just being able to run the point um, because that is a position that she will one day take over. And then, once again, a player like Destiny Burden getting these extended minutes so that, you know, if we see something like this happen again, which inevitably it might, they are more prepared and they have more experience 
on this Gonzaga team. Look at this ball movement. Maxwell looking for her first points, and there they are. First points, her first shot. I think it goes to what you just said, which is the ball movement. They were very patient on that play and waited for the slightest defensive breakdown where Maxwell was able to just, you know, quickly pull up into a jumper. Speaking of jumpers, Johnson's been good from that range. Came really close to being that good again. Second chance from down low and a foul. And Destiny Burton not happy, hands in the air. I think that those mid-range shots are difficult shots to make, especially in transition of a game. So I'm always really impressed when players can knock it down. Obviously, we know that Brennan Maxwell can. We know that both Kaylee and Kaylin Trong can. Um, so to you know have a player who's able to do that from either side, I think is just a luxury because it's hard to guard defensively as well. Tamara Davis missing the front end. And it's a seven point game. All right, Amanda, what was the clear change the Bulldogs must have made here in this second quarter? Because again, we know the Royals are down seven now. They were up at the end of the first quarter, right? What has been the defensive change? Yeah, I would say that they're limiting the touches that Adia Brisker has had. If you, you know, think about it, she's not really someone whose name you've mentioned in this second quarter. I think that they have more defensive pressure on her. They're limiting what Queens can do from the inside. Granted, they're still getting those looks, but to have their leading scorer not getting as many touches, not having an ability to kind of do what she wants to, where she wants to on the court is forcing Queens to make an adjustment. And then I think as a whole, having the defensive pressure of holding Queens to just six points so far in this second quarter is huge. They're forcing them to play out. No doubt, by the way, after that three, Maxwell now at five points, and that's, that's closer to where she should be a game as compared to zero a couple minutes ago. You see what I'm saying, though? Like, look, it, they had it. They had, you know, room and space, and then their defense forcing them to just start over from beyond the perimeter. Brown called on the travel. Boy, look at that. The, uh, the Fab Five, unfortunately, the injured Fab Five. Stokes, Hybins, <laughs> Hollingsworth, Man. Trong, and then... We haven't seen her all year, unfortunately, on the far right side. Uh, that was Bree Salenbein. If you watched the team last year, you know she was the highest recruited ranked player in program history. She showed flashes last year. They're expecting the kind of year this year out of her that like Avon Ejim had last year as Vonnie gets another two. But one of the nice things about the depth the Zags have, even considering the current injuries, is you know they can afford Salenbein to maybe take a red shirt considering the injury. Yeah, I remember, you know, a few games ago when we did a game together talking about the depth that this Gonzaga team has because we were talking about the fact that they want to run, they want to play quick, and you have to have a lot of players on your bench who can play minutes at any point to do that. Uh, and we mentioned, you know, that would come in handy in case of injury. Oops. In case of, you know, illness. Um, and that, you know, is what we're looking at. This is why you build a strong bench for moments like this. Yep. Now, the good news for the Zags is, again, we, we do not have any specific info on, on any of these injuries because they don't tell broadcasters things like that. However, we know that Stokes will be back. We know Hybins will be back. We know Hollingsworth will be back. We don't know the status of Kaylee, uh, Kaylee Trong's foot. Yeah. And, you know, that's going to be an adjustment for them when it comes to that point guard position because... You know, as you mentioned, Kaylin, probably a little bit more comfortable playing off ball, can play in the point guard position. Obviously, Peyton Muma getting extended minutes in that role. But it's hard when you have kind of the facilitator and, you know, a go-to leader on your team out. That was a great little jump shot by Yvonne Lee, and here comes Poo, uh, Peyton Muma. Game clock and shot clock, pretty much the same here. You kind of saw Brennan Maxwell calling for the ball. She didn't have a defender on her. She wanted it. So what do the Zags want here? egypt has been phenomenal. 20 points in the first half. And a foul before she took that drive. I think that that's exactly what you want <laughs> with the clock winding down. You want to get her the basketball, let her go to work. 
She'll have a chance for a couple more free throws here. Defensively for Queens, it's almost like you want to see them guarding the high post and then just having help side defense because right now she's just catching it at will and then she's just putting the ball down and going to work. Uh, and it hasn't been, you know, very difficult for her to score, obviously, with the numbers that she's put up in this first half. Um, so I think that there needs to be pressure on the entry pass first, then kind of force her to go against a second defender. So that's 22 first half points for Ejim as Maxwell tips that out of bounds. At halftime, my pledge to you watching at home, I will find out if on Ejim's career high because, boy, it seems like she's going to pass it tonight. 22 in the first. Nice looking one off the rim by Jalen Brown. And at the end of one, boy, what a second half. Or rather, second quarter for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They were down at the end of one. And at the end of two, a 14-point lead, 37 to 23 over Queens University out of Charlotte. Stay here. We have stats, highlights, analysis, a whole lot more coming up after the break as the Zags are now taking care of Queens on the WCC Network on Stadium. Well, the first quarter of that one was a little bit iffy for the Gonzaga Bulldogs, but as we hit halftime, they're starting to roll 37 to 23 on top of Queens University from Charlotte. Great to see it here at halftime with the great Amanda Smith. I'm Greg Talbot, and a little touch and go at the beginning there, but they finally found their footing. Yeah, really competitive first quarter. Gonzaga actually down heading into the second, but then outscoring Queens 21 to six in that second quarter. We saw a defensive adjustment. You and I talked so much in that first quarter about Adia Brisker. She went scoreless in the second. And then on the offensive end from Gonzaga, Avon Ejim just going to work, 22 points. So it's starting to be an interesting time of year around these parts in college basketball because there's tonight's game, there's Sunday's game at home against UC Davis. Then all of a sudden, we're into conference play. So as we get ready to head into that, Amanda, let's take a look at the Bulldogs' resume. Seven and two overall, 
a couple of really good wins. I mean, Louisville, I think, was ranked number five when they beat the Cardinals. Tennessee was ranked somewhere around 24. A good road win at Stephen F. Austin. That is a notoriously high-scoring, great shooting team. Picked up a good road win at Wyoming. This is about what you would expect. I mean, no one expected them to beat Stanford. So I think you'd be really happy with 7-2 and two coming into this year. I think that the reason you schedule a really competitive non-conference is so that it can expose what you still need to work on, but it can also tell you what you're really good at and just continue to build your resume because eventually it's going to come down to tournament time. And those wins, when the NCAA committee is looking at, you know, not just who is going to get in, but where they're ranked, who they're going to play first, it's incredibly important. And that's one of the reasons you go and play fun tournaments like they did in the Bahamas, picking up a couple of those huge wins. We'll show you a little bit of video uh, of, that, that, of that as we toss to break. Those tournaments so fun. I love it, right? Like, yeah, hit the replay. There we go. Come on, hit the replay. We'll show it in a second. At the end of the first half, 37-23 Zags. More coming up on the halftime show after this.
Back at halftime inside the kennel, Bulldogs 37, Queens University out of Charlotte. 23, and Amanda Smith, let's take a look at some of our halftime highlights here. Now, usually when we put these highlight packages together, our great broadcast crew here in the McCarthy Athletic Center, they're trying to decide, you know, which players should we do? There is no question for the first quarter, it was all a Dia Brisker for Queens. And this is what they wanted. This is what they needed from her. Coming out right away, a really hot start for this Queens team because of moments like that. Adia Brisker, 11 points in that first quarter. And then, if you thought 11 points for Brisker was impressive, how about doubling that for Avon Ejim? She's got 22 in the first half. Her career high is 26. Sorry, one more time, say it again. Just kidding, won't make you. <laughs> but to have a player who's so consistent and good like Avon Ejim, you know, this is just a luxury to have as a coach, and I think that it has been Brisker from Queens. It's been Ejim from Gonzaga. There has to be a defensive adjustment and a continued adjustment from Gonzaga on Brisker coming up in the second half. Pretty amazing. The shooting percentage difference, a lot of that is coming from Avon Ejim because Vani is 8 for 9 from the field for the Zags, and they've only taken 22 shots. I mean, how do they stop Avon Ejim in the second half? Well, and I think that that's what they're talking about in the locker room right now. My thought is she's getting too easy of an entry pass into the high post. Once she catches it, she's just going one-on-one -on -one with whatever Queens player is defending her. I would like to see Queens come out, have, you know, a defender defending the entry pass into the high post to Ejim, and then a second defender there to rotate forcing her, then you kind of have two players. You're playing almost two on one, but I think at this point you have to. So it's been all brisker for Queens. She's got 11 points. Nobody else on the team has more than six. Speaking of numbers, speaking of stats, we're coming back on the other side of the break with all your halftime stats and more. There are some eye-popping numbers that you have to see to believe. Make sure you come back. We'll show you those in a second on the WCC Network on Stadium. Another fun full of house tonight in the kennel, 37-23. Your halftime score between Gonzaga and Queens. Greg Talbot, Amanda Smith with you here at halftime. Getting ready to 
Get the second half going in just a couple of seconds after we take a look at our halftime stats. Again, in case you weren't with us, the first quarter ended up with Queens on top, 17 to 16. Second quarter was nuts. Gonzaga outscored the Royals 21 to six, and that's where we get some of these numbers. I mean, Amanda, I, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I think that, uh, you love numbers. I hate them. Oh, you hate them. I'm okay. an English teacher. I, well, I love numbers for this <laughs> reason, that you're able to see why something is happening. You know, I like answers, sure. okay? I'm a very literal person in that sense. I like I like a fact. So you wouldn't have done well in my English class is what you're saying? I might have. Okay. Just, I guess I'm Sorry, a, overall a great back, student. Back to the stats. <laughs> but, you know, this is kind of what we're seeing right now from both sides and why Gonzaga has moved to being so successful on the offensive end. I talked about attacking the paint, if you remember, as one of my keys to this game, 22 paint points for the Bulldogs as opposed to eight for Queens, something that also we mentioned in this broadcast, we wanted to see Gonzaga do force them outside. Don't allow those shots from the inside. And then the differential in shooting percentages, 68 from Gonzaga, 38 from Queens. I think that just goes to speak to the paint points. Your percentage goes up when you have a closer shot to the basket. That is often how basketball works. Now I know. Sometimes it's really, like I always say, basketball is this complex game. You do so much. You scout so much. There's so many different numbers you can look at. But right now, if we simplify it, Gonzaga is getting looks very close to yeah. the basket. They're efficient from the paint. That is close. So that therefore, their shooting percentage is what it is. No doubt about that. Period. Starting five on the floor for the Zags to begin half number two. Maxwell, Ejim, Trong, Burton, and Williams. What do you think about Destiny Burton's uh, play in the first half? She was not coming in, into the season expecting to be a major role player. I am just impressed with the role that she's been able to have, you know, sliding into the starting position. You said, you know, coming into the season, she wasn't even really anticipating being a role player getting consistent minutes. And so I think that, you know, to be able to just step up and play when needed is what you expect when you sign on to any you know collegiate basketball program. There's Williams on another assist for Kaylin Trong. That was beautiful. That's something that I don't think we've really seen so far this game is r running and pushing the basketball from Gonzaga. I think that you know maybe here in the second we're going to see increased defensive pressure from this team and then more of that running that they like to do. Here comes Trong to bring it up. By the way, after that last great pass to Williams. She's now got five assists, and this is just the beginning of the second half. Notable, just two points for Kaylin in the first half. So she is really taking her role as a point guard and a passer very seriously. Greg, I don't know if you're seeing this, but it kind of looks like she was wincing a little bit. I'm not sure what might have happened, but then immediately you see Peyton Muma moving to kind of that check-in area. So I'm curious if we're going to see Kaylin Trong check out of this game. Well, she's running up court and she looks all right at the moment. But you got to think they'll take her out just to be safe, right? I mean, especially with the way things are right now. Yeah, absolutely. It was almost like she was kind of making this wincing face. You see it again there as she was on the offensive end and then now here again running up the court. Maxwell, great dish to Ejim again. She had 22 in the first half. Can't get it to go. Burton, good rebound. Vani underneath. What a look. Her career high is 26, and that's 24. Really fun first half of basketball into the second here in Spokane. It's been a little while since some of these fans have gotten to get a really good look at this team. That last home game was against Maine. The game before that got canceled because of some illnesses and, and safety protocol against Eastern Washington on, on the Saturday of, of Thanksgiving. So, you know, sometimes you get a lot of non-conference games here, Amanda, with this program. This year, it, it feels like it's been a little harder to see the team than some years as there you see Trong head to the bench. Let's talk about Kaylin. We'll come back to the other stuff. Absolutely. I think that, you know, it's obviously we don't know what happened, but it was a couple plays ago when she had the basketball. She kind of just started to make a face that she was in some discomfort you kind of, well, I saw, I don't know if you saw, immediately kind of signal over to the bench, look at the bench, and then you saw Peyton Muma move to that check-in spot. 
It's a foul. Williams came down on the hard end of that for the second time. So what that means with Kaylin Trong indisposed at the moment, and by the way, not on the bench. She went back to the table or the locker room. So let, that's Esther Little. She's about to come in. That means the Zags at the moment are down to six players until Kaylin Trong comes back out saying she's okay. Yeah, so we'll just have to, you know, wait for an update, see if she does return. But something that we talked about early on in the game was not having the depth that you're used to. Right now, you're in a position where you only have one off the bench. There's Coach Lisa Fordia on the left. She can't imagine she came into the season thinking that was going to be an issue with this team's depth. And here comes Kaylin Trong. At least she's out of the locker room. And looks like she's about to sit on the bench. She's got. We'll show you her on the camera in a second here. But she's she's walking down the bench. I would say maybe slightly ginger on one leg. That's what I was thinking too. It looks like she was handed maybe what looks like a Band-Aid. She has something in her hand. It was not a Band-Aid. I, I hope Just not. I, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> this is why we have camera angles. So not sure what happened there. But I'm, I'm curious if we will see more minutes from her tonight. Now, and, and here's the thing, and this would be a good time to talk about this as this one goes out of bounds. This is a game where Gonzaga is up, what, about 15 points? Mm -hmm. And even with only six players available, in all likelihood they should hold on to win this game. You might not need to bring Kaylin Trong back in here if you can keep a double-digit lead as Muma nails a three. The game against UC Davis on Sunday may be a different story. That's a bigger non-conference game. Would you even want to bring Kaylin Trong back on if there's even a question tonight? To me, it's like, oh, it's like tough because my initial gut instinct is to say no. Why risk it? But then you are putting all of these minutes on your other kind of go-to players, especially a player like Avon Ejem, like Brenna Maxwell. You know, these players that over the past few games, have just been playing more and more minutes, so you're putting a little bit more pressure on them. Speaking of Brenda Maxwell, there's her second three of the night, give her eight points. After a really slow start, no points in the first quarter, been really good since about midway through the second. I think it's because you're calling her Brenda Maxwell, not Brenda Buckets. Should we start calling her that? Yeah, I think so. I think it's gonna catch on. Just Do you like think her parents at like home would be happy to hear us 100%. using that? 100%. Okay. 100%. Well, you know, her parents are probably here. They're from Gig Harbor on the west side of the state. They probably drive over. Yes, I know that they are here. They make an effort to come to almost every single one of her games. Steve and Kim, wherever you are, <laughs> if you're listening, if you didn't come to this one, hello. The pass has been awfully snowy for the last week to get over from the west side of the state. You never know. You never know. So Destiny Burton back to the bench for GU. So she is their one reserve at the moment. Boy, this is gonna be a lot of cardio. Hope the girls have been following the cardio routine in practice. Well, and so that's kind of, I just, I love that you mentioned that because it is a point of emphasis when we think back to the last time we did a broadcast together. When you have to run, you need a lot of players. Uh, and we know that at that point, from practice, Lisa Fortier said they weren't necessarily physically where they needed to be. So now, you know, it doesn't matter if they're ready or not. They have to be. That's a foul, and Alexandria Johnson went in a little too aggressively trying to steal that pass away. And that should take us to our third quarter timeout, and it does, 4.50 to go. In quarter number three, and the Zags up 20 despite being down to just six dressed players at the moment. Rest of the third after this on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Nice full house again tonight here inside the McCarthy Athletic Center. Not unexpectedly, considering this team is in the top 25, number 22 this week. They still have not lost at home yet this year. They beat Long Beach State. They beat Southern Utah. They beat Maine. That game against Eastern Washington over Thanksgiving got postponed. Sounds like they're trying to reschedule that one. But again, whether it's the men's or women's team, you don't see them losing here very often, Amanda. And I just love that consistently you have fans showing out. It's just such a great atmosphere. I just love being here. One of the best women's basketball atmospheres in the country. Really a contender for the West Coast, no doubt about it. All right, so by the way, Kaylin Trong at the top here in the middle of your screen there next to Muma, still on the bench. We have a foul on the play as Ejim was driving. So Destiny Burton is on the bench. She's the one definitely available zag. And Kaylin Trong, we're, I'd be surprised if we saw her before the end of the game just to be careful. I guess we'll see, but again, that means only six available players for the next 14 and a half minutes. Yeah. If you're just tuning in now, where you been? But in case you missed it, Kaylin Trong, we are unsure what happened. Yeah. But what we do know is that she was kind of making a face like she was in some sort of discomfort, checked out, left, was not on the bench, came back, had something in her hand that was not a Band-Aid. I'm assuming it was maybe obviously something. An Advil or something. Yeah, yeah. like something like that that is edible. Um, no and free then, ads. Yeah. No free ads. I'm not saying what <laughs> brand it was. And, um, you know, we haven't seen her check back into the game since that point. That was Casey Kidwell. Another shot clock violation. That is three or four tonight just for Queens. And the Zags have had one of their own as well. So it's a 20-point game right now. Queens, they've scored just four points in this third quarter. If you remember, they scored just six in the second. So after a really strong first quarter where they had the lead 17 to 16 against Gonzaga, I think it's been a defensive adjustment from the Zag side. And then a player we talked about so often, like Adia Brisker, she's only scored two points since the first half. That was Yvonne Ejim, 26 points. That ties her career high. Next one's going to pass it. And considering they really can't take her out, got to think it's going to happen is that one does not go down from Lee. And Kaylin, okay, there's Kaylin Trong at the top of Great your screen. Time. She's at the scorer's table ready to check back in with Destiny Burton. So that's huge. Huge, right? Because now instead of six, you have an available seven. I know it kind of seems like what's the difference in one player? It's everything. It's being able to have someone else to check in in case of, in case of blank, sure. you know. That's Britta Maxwell, another three. Her third of the night give her now 11 points as that two is down from Balday. Talk about a spoiler of riches. I know that it's hard right now because of so few available players, but coming into this game, the Zags have four players averaging more than 10 points a game. That's huge. Ejim looking for her career high, and there it is, 26, rather 28. And a beautiful way to break it the little you know off balance one leg jumper over the defender come on that was pretty 235 to go in the third quarter zags rolling 54 to 29 here in spokane
Okay, so there was a major scare, like we mentioned before we went to commercial break. We were not sure about the status of Kaylin Trong, but we saw her come in right before that last timeout. So she's standing up, there she is. Looks like she's headed back onto the court. That has got to be the good news of the year so far for the Zags. Yeah, absolutely. We were just unsure in the moment. You know, we saw her not just check out of the game, but leave the court and then come back. So to see her check back in is a great, great sign for Zags fans. Well, great that she wants to play, and clearly she feels confident enough in absolutely. what looked like a potential injury to feel comfortable getting back out there. Yeah, because we were talking about, you know, do you put her back in? Does she play these minutes? I think just to have an additional player when you're down to an available seven, an available six is really, really difficult. Yes, Gonzaga, they're in a good position at this point in the game where they have, you know, a pretty comfortable lead against Queens. But, you know, to have your leader that you look to come in the game and run that point guard position the way that she has been, uh, it just, it has to feel good. And we'll see how she looks going to the free throw line. Also good news that she felt comfortable enough to drive to some contact and take that shot. Yeah, absolutely. Two points for her in this game. So she's had a quiet offensive game in comparison to what we have kind of seen from her offensively uh, over the past, I would say, three to five. Um, but five assists, which is huge. Clearly taking her responsibility as a, as a pass first point guard seriously tonight. There are a couple points. Well, when you talk about pass first, I think overall Gonzaga has done a really good job at passing the basketball. 15 assists on 22 made field goals Amazing. for them. Amazing. And what's so funny is, yeah, we know that this team likes to run, that's true, but they've had a lot from the set half court. Absolutely, which is just reassuring because, yes, you want to have your game plan, um, which is what you want to do, but then in situations like this where maybe you have to make an adjustment, uh, it's not necessarily where you want to be, what you want to do, right? You want to be able to run in transition and get those fast buckets. But when you're down players, that is a tough, tough set to run because you're just asking for players to get exhausted. So here's Brisker at the free throw line. She had 11 points really early, and now she's just got 14. She has really slowed down since her unbelievably hot start. Zags figured out a way to shut her down. Yeah, just three points in this second half so far for Brisker. More defensive pressure on that end from Gonzaga, and then no other Queens player really being able to match up offensively against Gonzaga's defense. Not even close. Little, great dish to Burton, bounced out of bounds. The next closest player in scoring would be Johnson. She's got eight, but then from there, you have a couple players with two points, one player with one point. Uh, it looks a little similar, like same, but different numbers from Gonzaga's side, where it's really been a huge performance from Avon Ejim. 28 points, a career high for her. And then you have 11 from Maxwell, six from Esther Little. That was about to be the highlight of the year. <laughs> Trong was about to go behind the back for Williams. I can't believe they had the guts to try that. Great move to the rack by Davis. Shot won't go up to Trong. Maybe they'll simplify it this time down. Yeah, try it again. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do it again. Dishing it out. It was simplified. Yeah? Didn't have the behind the back second part. No, but still. Great assist, another assist for Kaylin Trung, her sixth of the night. You have to love a player who has that kind of court vision that she does. Maxwell to the bench, Peyton Muma back in. And Burton. First points of the night for Destiny Burton. Clock winding down here in the third quarter. 15 to shoot and 35 on the game clock. Here's Brisker trying to get it going. Great up front, hands up defense by Little. 
moving it strong hasn't shot a lot tonight instead she'll just keep passing with no difference between the game clock and the shot clock on this end Muma getting aggressive great screen from Burton looking for somewhere to pass it out to Trong just enough space Burton has it put back no good rebound by Queens and that should be the end of the third quarter and it is another strong quarter by the Zags 58 to 30 they have nearly doubled up the Queens Royals after they were down at the end of the first quarter we go to the fourth next on the WCC Network on Stadium. No bad seats in the house here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. People always talk about how hard it is to get a ticket to the men's games. It's not always easy to get a ticket to the women's games either. Nice big crowd. It's been a while since we've played here in Spokane. And boy, as we start the fourth quarter, it's 58 to 30 zags. And between the fun atmosphere and how good the team is looking right now, Amanda, hard to get a ticket. Got to get a pull some strings sometimes. Uh, that's what happens when you're one of the best teams in the country and you've got the ranking Top 25. to go with it. Yeah. People come out for this team. Here's Trong. She was looking for her first big three of the night. Hasn't gotten it yet. She'll try again. No. Out of bounds. She's kind of laughing at herself. I love that. <laughs> you know, just Gotta have a sense of humor. Well, absolutely. Because it was like the same spot, the same shot. Yes, let me try again. And then, you know, doesn't hit rim. You gotta laugh at a moment like that. Brisker rejected straight up by Michaela Williams, but she gets the better of her second time around. I feel like both people won in that exchange. Yeah, absolutely. So now Something both can feel good about. Right. Good defense from Michaela Williams, yeah. you know, to be there, have that presence, but then I think a really smart play from Brisker, you know, realizing that I'm not going to get this shot up over her, using that step back move to create just the slightest bit of separation so she could at least get the shot off. And we know that she's been a really efficient scorer, so I'm not surprised at all that she made that. No. Johnson back running the offense here for Queens as we are down inside the last nine minutes to play in this one. Here's Brisker. Shot won't go on. A couple of air balls last time down for both teams. Yeah, it looked like Brisker was trying a little bit of almost the same play, that one-on-one -on -one against Michaela Williams. Uh, but I think 
if they could try to get like the slightest bit of ball movement going on their end, it would just allow some more separation from Gonzaga's bigs. There's Ejim, 30 points. That's her career high. More importantly, and I would say just as impressively, if not more so as that shot doesn't go down, Amanda, she's 12 for 15. She's shooting 80%. What on earth? Burton, no foul. And Queen's ball. I would say like a good shooting night is somewhere in like the 35 to 41, 42 yeah, percent it's, range. It's, it's amazing if you're 50. Yeah, yeah. like that. That's like a well, that's like a yeah. great shooting night. 50. I'm like, wow, great job. 80. You know, My sometimes word. you're just feeling it. So, like you mentioned, 30 points from her. I feel like it's worth mentioning that the next closest player on the team in scoring is Brennan Maxwell with 11. Yeah. And it's like no one else has really had to kind of step up and be a scorer on Gonzaga tonight because what they've been doing has been working, which is just getting Avon Ejim the ball and then letting her go one-on-one -on -one with the Queens defenders. So that's a good screen. Back to her. Spreading the love. Movement of the corner. Maxwell, she loves the corner, and that's why. So 14 points now for Maxwell. I thought maybe Yvonne Ejim was going to go for her second mm. career three-pointer. I thought so, too. I was kind of hoping for it. i got to be honest. Probably would have gone <laughs> in tonight. Of all the nights. When you're hot, you're hot, yeah. you know? Go for it. I disagree with Malcolm Gladwell about the hot hand fallacy. I think the hot hand is real. What do you think? I don't. It's not an English teacher thing. No, the, it, there is a theory that the hot hand doesn't exist oh. and that it's just st statistical probabilities and stuff. Do you believe, as, as no, a basketball player and yeah. coach, the hot hand exists? 100%. I think so, I think too. It, Malcolm like, Gladwell's full of it. From a, um, like a mental standpoint, I think when you're scoring, you're efficient, it just builds your confidence. Sure. You're like, okay, yeah, I can't miss tonight. Sure. I think we see it all around in collegiate sports and professional yes. sports all the time where like a player literally cannot miss. For what it's worth, please don't put that clip on Twitter and like at Malcolm Gladwell. I have no, I have no beef with the man. I just believe in the hot hand. Well, I thought it was like an English teacher no, reference. No, 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 no. <laughs> Back on the court. Zags by 31. I can do that much math. Yeah. So this, you know, at, at the beginning of the game, it really was. I feel like a competitive matchup. Um, and really impressed with what Queens was able to come out and do right away. Um, we talked about, you know, wanting a hot start from Gonzaga. The hot start started with Queens. They just came out and were efficient on the offensive end. And through that, like, whole first quarter, and then I think going into the second, as they get the roll, and you hear happening. the crowd, they're loving it. It's all happening. <laughs> By the way, I, I, do, I, I do just want to, it was Ben Cohen who wrote the book, The Hot Hand Fallacy. I don't know why I thought it was Malcolm Gladwell. <laughs> I don't want to get into no, Twitter. that's a good clarification. The, the, the good news for me is I'm not on Twitter, so I can't be. Oh. But just apologize. Let's take a look at Peyton Muma again. Wow. Right? It's like, oh, hanging up there at the top. You heard the crowd. They loved it. Great clarification. I think when it comes to being an athlete, like, if I'm having a good scoring night and I can't miss, that just, like, builds my confidence. I'm like, okay, I can't miss. I think there's something is I can't, can't I miss. I can't miss. Pretty much everyone on the Gonzaga team tonight has something to be proud of in terms of the way they've played. And Burton went around one too many times. I think maybe she didn't realize that as she kept kind of using that pivot foot, she did create some separation and space for herself from Balde of Queens where she could have kind of went up reverse with it instead of trying to pass it out with the defenders right there. Speaking of passing it out of bounds, back to the Zags. Another timeout on the floor. We will take it here in Spokane, 67 to 36. The Bulldogs on top of Queens inside five minutes to go. We'll put a lid on them then this one after the break on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Man, non-conference play here today, gone tomorrow. Went really fast. UC Davis coming up on Sunday. And then we're into it, man. BYU San Diego, one last non-conference game against Montana. The 21st. Uh, and then and then we're into it. Pepperdine, and we're off and running in WCC play. That went fast. I just like uh, in the blink of an eye, as they say. <laughs> this non-conference season has really flown by. It'll be interesting to see if they decide to reschedule the postponed Eastern Washington game. There's room there between Montana and Pepperdine. There is room. But it's also Christmas. Right, and it, you know, with the holidays, plus kind of what you've ex been experiencing injury-wise, illness-wise, is it worth scheduling an additional non-conference game? From what I have been told by people who do things like sit From around an and, inside and, and look at schedules as Muma elevates and can't get it to go, it sounds like both teams are off simultaneously for a week and a weekend in January. So maybe that's it. Here's Brisker. Oh, one more. Boy, she was great in the first half. Give her 18, and she'll have a chance for 19 at the free throw line. She's a phenomenal basketball player. It's been really, really fun to watch her in this game. I think that Gonzaga's defense obviously made an adjustment on her in the second and third quarters, but, you know, giving her that space, this is what she can do. She's a competitor. Got to make sure everyone stays safe. It's the local heroes, folks. Here's Brisker. Their leading scorer on the season, their leading scorer tonight, 19 points, nine for 22 from the field. Queens, they've shot 33% from the floor in this game. That's not a bad shooting percentage, but then you just, you look at Gonzaga, 60% shooting and I think it goes back to a lot of what we talked about points in the paint that percentage goes up when you have more opportunity from a closer place on the floor it's just obvious 36 points from the inside Michaela Williams got hacked pretty hard from the back of the side as she went up there so she'll obviously get two at the line Yvonne Ejim over on the bench as the Zags continue to run this six-man rotation and I don't know if we'll see Caitlin Trong or Avon Ejim check in again. We've got about four-ish minutes yeah. left in this game. Um, so really strong performances from two people that you would expect, you know, to have those kinds of games, especially when you are missing players. Well, That's just what you do when you are an upperclassman slash leader. Not to get in the game of, like, who would you like to be injured least? Because that's a weird, not yeah, that's a weird game. nice conversation to have. That's I guess a weird game. I, I won't be participating. No, I, I, I guess what <laughs> I'm trying to say is with a blowout like this, this is the kind of game where it would be really nice for Callie Stokes to get minutes. Yeah. And it's, I think that, yes, obviously, she's not dressed. We're not going to see Callie Stokes get minutes, but you are getting more of an opportunity from players who really probably wouldn't be playing these kinds of minutes if everyone was healthy yep. just based on roster need and kind of offensively what they want to do. Um, and those are players like Peyton Mumo, like Destiny Burton, uh, that we wouldn't be seeing these kinds of minutes from. We would be seeing minutes, just not to this extent. Inside, four minutes to go, by the way. Peyton Mumu with a career high tonight. She's got seven. She hadn't gotten to shoot a lot in her young career. As the redshirt freshman, that she is. But I think Michaela Williams just got tossed out of the game. Oh. So it looks like she was having some words after that stoppage well, they've been with Allie Johnson from Queens. They've been beating her up all night. And the official CBH. signaled that she was tossed. Look at the reaction. So... Really can't afford it anymore. We're down to six players again, just for different reasons for the Zags. Here's Williams, what happened here? Johnson. Ooh, mm. well that'll do it. And so you see the official come over immediately. Yeah. There were words exchanged. Here's Johnson on the other end. 
So like you mentioned, Gonzaga now, really, they only have six available. Truly. Back to that. So Ejim back on the floor, Trong stays off. And Coach Forty has to be like, we need to get everyone back. It's tough when you're in that situation. Well, you got to defend but yourself, yeah. But, like, this is a tough situation to be in. You know, luckily it's the fourth quarter. Sure. And there's just three minutes left. Six available, like we've talked about so much this game. It's not ideal. It's, I would say that they're in a, you know, a comfortable position here in the fourth and then just having three minutes left. Um, if there was any time where you were going to be down to six players, like I don't want to say it's great and that it's happening now, but it's like the best case sure. scenario for when it could happen. Sure. By the way, speaking of that small rotation, every one of the Zags' seven players, including Avon Ejim, every one of their players has played more than 20 minutes tonight. Hope everyone was on the treadmill and running lines and stuff during practice all season. They needed it tonight. Nice jumper from Brisker. She's got a great shot, up yeah. to 23 points, 9 of 24 from the floor from her. She did knock down a three-point shot, which I, you know, think could be a confidence builder. Yeah. Um, just because she's not as efficient from the perimeter as she is in her two-point game. But she's been a really, really fun player to watch tonight. Speaking of efficient from the perimeter, that was almost another three from Brenna Maxwell, who's four for six from downtown tonight. She's got two minutes for another. By the way, Amanda, there will be no tacos tonight. They only have five oh three-pointers. Oh, man, I know. I was kind of thinking about that. i got to be honest. It's, it's sad for you, me. You should go talk to Coach Forty <laughs> after the game about the game plan and say, Coach, oh, I well, Why did you guys focus on the paint points? I was really after the tacos. <laughs> <laughs> and will you change your game plan for me, Amanda Smith, in the yeah. future? I guess, you know, why at the beginning of the game did I even make it a key to the game to attack the paint? I should have said, shoot threes. Sure. Shoot the three sure. for myself. <laughs> Here's Maxwell at the free throw line. Zags are cruising. You know what is kind of fun to think about, though? If, if you do reference what we talked about keys to this game being get out, have a hot start. Didn't necessarily see it from Gonzaga in the first quarter. Loved the adjustment that they made, especially on Brisker heading into the second. Not getting themselves into foul trouble. That was another one. Yep. I think that they did a great job at not sending Queens to the free throw line in this game. Well, they certainly couldn't afford to have anybody foul out exactly. tonight. Right? And then attacking yeah. the paint, Yvonne Ejim, a career high performance for her. Really... I think that that is kind of when we talk about, like, what was the difference in this game? I feel like from an offensive standpoint, it was her because the defensive adjustment from Queens was just, she was just taking them one-on-one, -on -one really. Hit that bounds by Ejim. Wonder who our player of the game in the post-game show is going to be, Amanda. I don't know. We'll have to think about it. Well, now give her a steal, <laughs> too. I hope, our, I hope our graphics guys up in the booth just added that steal, too. Here's Muma. Six assists for Peyton Muma. Amazing. Off the bench. Very nearly seven there. Five to shoot. She may have to put up one more. Ejim, got to do it. That was a good shot, just a tiny bit short. Ow! Esther Little, Esther Little hits the bench, and she gets up fine, thankfully, and that's Brisker on the other end for more. 25 points. That's a new career high for her, and, and she's got to walk away from this game feeling really good about herself, too. I Against a top 25 team. Oh, 100%, and we you know, have mentioned it a couple times, but the first time that this Queens team is playing a ranked program, they moved to Division One this year. These are the kinds of games you want to play in non-conference. You want to challenge yourself. Five on the clock again. They're running it down. Maxwell. Oh, boy, that would have been something. She was super nifty with it. Yeah. Egypt, another steal. 
basically no difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Maybe one sentence. They'll just run it down, and that should be the end of it tonight in Spokane. A full house in McCarthy Athletic Center gets to see a really impressive seven-player win. Gonzaga 73, Queens University 49. And that was a fun one tonight. Every single one of the players played more than 20 minutes. Everyone's conditioning was up to snuff. Shot over 50% as a team. Just W's all around. I think that once again, this started out a really competitive game and kind of forced Gonzaga to look at what they were doing and say, how do we adjust or we're going to lose? And they came out and they made the adjustment. And to me, that was the difference maker, the adjustment on the defensive end in slowing down because she still had 25 points, yep. but slowing down specifically in the second and third quarters, Adia Brisker of Queens. Well, there's Yvonne Ejim. Spoiler alert, she was after the first 10 minutes probably and certainly is now our player of the game tonight brought to you by first interstate bank 13 for 17 from the field a new career high 32 points seven rebounds a couple of assists just miraculous truly a player that can do it all i think that it's such a luxury having a player like that like avon ejim on your team just an overall really, really balanced performance from her. Well, actually not balanced, just kind of like she just took it and ran with it and the scale slid completely her way. Give her player of the game. Yeah. Give her a bunch of tacos. No doubt. Um, <laughs> so that was a fun one tonight. Went pretty much the way Zag fans here in Spokane expected it to. UC Davis on Sunday. The Big West has a couple of really good basketball teams. That one probably not going to be a cakewalk. No, and I think that obviously if you're UC Davis, you're watching this game saying game plan coming into that one is we cannot allow Avon Ejim to do what she did in this game, which was really just take players one-on-one. -on -one. No doubt about it. And then all of a sudden, boy, the 17th, it's here a week from Saturday. BYU in the house. Now, they were not picked to win the WCC this year as they were last year. They lost a ton of gals to graduation. But knowing that Gonzaga might still have some injured and sick players a week and a half from now, all of a sudden makes that game potentially way more competitive than it might have been expected to. Yeah, there's just, there's still question marks. And I think it's worth re referencing again that kind of at this point, you would have almost implemented and kind of be at a really secure place where you feel like in practice you've gotten there, you're ready for conference play. And with injury, with illness, you know, they haven't necessarily been able to add everything to kind of perfect everything that they want to before conference begins. So I think it's going to still be them learning, growing, adjusting as they move into conference play just from what's been going on. All right, let's take a look at our post-game stats as part of this 73-49 to 49 win tonight here in Spokane. Field goal percentage, sometimes it's that easy and it tells the story. I think Coach Fortier has got to be the happiest about the assists tonight. The passing was unreal. Yeah, 19 assists for Gonzaga on 27 made field goals. I just love looking at those numbers, you know, efficient on the offensive end, not just one player. Like, obviously, Avon Ejim was that player where she was able to score tonight, but not just one player being the only one to be looked at. You know, you have to stop the ball. You have to stop the pass from Kaylin Tronk, from Peyton Muma, all of these efficient offensive players where maybe they don't jump out to you immediately after this game from the box score because we just, like, as I think fans of basketball love looking at, like, who scored the most points. Sure. Um, but that doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. So I don't think it's as big of a win margin. I don't think that Avon Ejim maybe has as many opportunities as she does without a ball handler slash facilitator at first getting her the basketball and letting her do what she did. 
Peyton Muma, six assists. Kaylin Trong, five assists. The Gonzaga Bulldogs, a wagon tonight in Spokane. 73 to 49, your final score for our entire WCC Network crew and the great Amanda Smith. I'm Greg Talbot saying thank you so much for joining us. We will see you on Sunday when the Zags take on UC Davis on the WCC Network on Stadium. <laughs>